and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm still sitting in my freezing office today, but I have, but that's not going to stop me solving Sudoku. And what have we got for you today? We've got Equilibrium by Zendari. Now, Mark sent me this um, earlier on today. I'm actually recording this quite late today as well, which is a little bit of a risk I've discovered because this this puzzle has five stars out of five for difficulty. And I know this because Mark's covering email said that no bifurcation is required to solve this exclamation mark, which I mean, are there more terrifying words in the English language than no bifurcation is required? That That is something we could all debate, I think. Um, uh, anyway, I then looked it up, of course, on Logic Masters Germany. I discovered it is five stars out of five. Hardly anybody solved it. And it was published um, ages ago in um, August, I want to say, 2022. So it's it's been out for six months. And yeah, it's it's got an enormous approval rating from those people who have managed to solve it. So I've no doubt it's brilliant. Um, but I hope I will be able to do it, not least because if I can't do it and I spend too long on it, then, then meeting the 8.30 deadline later is going to be even harder. Um, but I'll read you the rules, which are really simple today in, in a moment or two. I've got a few things to say first. Let me start off with some birthdays. Matthew over there in New York. It's your birthday today, and I know this because your wife Beth wrote to us and told us that you are the maximum value of a seven cell killer cage today. Now, how many of you know the secret? How many of you know know what that must be? I think that means you're 42. Um, congratulations on, on reaching that ripe old age. Um, and then Jesper, you've turned 22 today. And you have what sounds like a busy life, my friend, but I was delighted to hear that you still try and watch at least one Cracking the Cryptic video every day. Now that's now that's dedication. So Jesper and Matthew, we hope you both have brilliant days with lots of cake. Now spe speaking of things that are chocolate, I need to say a huge thank you today. Let me show you why. Epsilon, one of our viewers, sent a chocolate teapot to us. That is a chocolate teapot. I have not seen this yet. I am very nervous about this because Mark picked this up from our PO box this morning. Mark likes sweet things and he better not eat that before I get a chance to have uh, to at least admire it and then consume it. Um, but that is an absolutely beautiful thing. I mean, it's a real chocolate teapot. And people say those things aren't useful. Look at it. I mean, that is just brilliant. And we also got sent these two Rubik's Cubes as well. Um, so I need to say thank you for these um, to Darcy. I think it's Darcy Bowes. It could be boys as well. Um, but thank you, Darcy. And uh, these are different. I was looking at these on the picture. And this one, you can see that the... The edges are sort of this yellow block here is the same color. But if we go over here, oh, sorry, orange block. <laughs> if you go over this side, I don't know what's going on with this cube, but that cube looks very complicated to me um, because these, these are all different colors. So quite what this one means, I don't know. I do, I do like myself a Rubik's cube uh, occasionally. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on well, at least one of those as well. So thank you very much to both of you. We really, really appreciate it. Um, now, what else do I have to tell you about? Not much, I don't think. I've got, to, well, the other thing, of course, going on is Alice's. Oh, no. Well, one one other thing before we get to this. Uh, there was a bonus crossword video today. If you like our cryptic crossword content, I had a crack at Tramp's puzzle in The Guardian yesterday. And very amusing it is, too. Uh, about half the clues refer to Harry and Meghan <laughs> and uh, they weren't sort of pejorative they were they were merely informative um and uh yeah so if you if you like cryptic crosswords do have a look at that um and yeah and this is the other thing we've got going on of course over on Patreon right now Alice's Adventures in Sudoku Land times for a shout out have passed but you still have nine days left if you solve 
um, just three of the puzzles you'll be in with a chance of winning the competition so do have a crack at that the, the feedback we've been getting for this hunt has been terrific and it's definitely more approachable if you've got kids and you've always thought oh I might be able to get them into Sudoku this is where to start because you also get a picture when you solve each of the puzzles a Japanese sum Sudoku puzzles and that's rather cool anyway oh I need to read out the names of people who, who solved all 12 well done to Jens Pankoki um, I think it's Michael Reikaboa, I want to say, Yarko Pajuni Emmy, Livy Roberts, Mark Tattersall, Andrew Yakovenko, Tim Patterson, David Clare, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Chesik, Matthias Holter, Mastada or Mastada, um, Ethan Batty, Math Pesto, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the constructor, Math Pesto, fantastic. Um, ben Mason, Sidney Paul, Lane the Pain Train, Spencer, and Eric Brunther, all of you, very, very well done. Excellent solving, one and all. Now, let's have a look at equil Equilibrium and see what Zendari has in store for us. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow circle. So imagine that square was a 2, that square was a 5, that would be a 7. Because 2 plus 5 equals 7. That's how maths works. Um, cells containing filled grey circles must contain odd digits. Right, so we've got two little odd digits there. I think that's all of them. Um, and the value of, ooh, the value of row 8, column 7... Oh, I see. This is just saying how the inequality sign works. The value of eight, row 8, column 7 is less than that of row 8, column 8. So that digit cannot be a 9 for many reasons. But one of them is that this digit has to be higher and it can't be a 10. So yeah, make sure that digit's lower than that one and we're good to go. Do have a go at the puzzle. No bifurcation is required. The way to play is to click the link under the video. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now... The first thing I see when I stare at this is slightly terrifying in that there are no arrows, I want to say. I'm, I'm desperate. I've, I've, I've keep scanning, but I'm not seeing any arrows in this puzzle that are more than two cells long. I don't think there are any. And that is a worry indeed, because... Hmm, well, fundamentally, because although it's not possible there, I mean, imagine it, it doesn't quite work there either. But a two, a two cell arrow could just be a one two pair adding up to three in the circle. And that means that there are a few exceptions to this, but a lot of these circles could be very low numbers. And normally the way you generate restrictions in arrow Sudoku is forcing the circles to be high numbers. Now, there are there are a couple, well, these, these circles look a bit suspicious, don't they? Because the minimum we could put into those four squares would be a one, a two, a three, and a four. And one, two, three, and four add up to 10. So actually the minimum value of this circle is five because I, I, I can, you know, if I was to try and make that four, that would imply that those four cells had to add up to eight and that's impossible given that these four cells have to be different digits so okay right so these two digits are at least five is what we learn from that um does that do something with seven no it's quite a weird given digit actually that's seven what's that what's that doing probably not very much but um, I mean, I have not got a clue what to do here. I have not got a clue. I mean, again, it feels like it's to do... I just... I'm actually trying to think about this from a setting perspective. It... You know, setters like to start with symmetrical type patterns like this. So that, f it feels to me like I should be able to do something with that collection of, of arrows, but I'm not seeing what it is. 
oh well actually there's another another sim another pair of symmetrical arrows i've just noticed is those look those are symmetrical if we were to rotate the grid 180 degrees they would map to one another oh the, no so are those oh right golly actually so is that one so there's a okay there's a lot of symmetry oh dear that that one is asymmetrical because that one doesn't have a counterpart down there wow i do not have a clue what to do here no bifurcation is required but i think at least putting something in the grid is required Am, am I going mad? <laughs> Just this is awful. It's absolutely awful. Ten minutes. Uh, admittedly, not all of that spent staring at this, but I. Well, oh, it's not set, is it? Normally, when I get completely stuck, I, I eventually resort to set theory in order to help me. Um, but what could we do? Oh no, I don't know nines in the corner boxes have to be in sort of empty rectangle type positions can't go on because they can't go on arrows it would be quite good if nine wasn't an odd number then there would be a nine in one of those three that would be that would be useful because that would knock nine out of those squares Um, if okay let's think about nines if you put nine in one of those three cells then in this box nine would be vertical that's hmm, mildly interesting if one of those was a nine nine would be there that would knock nine out of those squares but it would also place nine here, which would place nine here. Hang on, let me just try and trace this through. Um, put nine in one of those. I mean, this is desperate, absolutely desperate. I don't think it's this at all. Um, Come back to this. I think it must be something to do with this, this this person who's like doing this and another person who's like doing this. Um, right. That I've had one sensible thought, which is not very impressive, um, but. OK. We can't have, I think that's right, I don't, well, here's the question I'm asking in my mind, how many digits on these arms can be the same digit? So if that digit, if we try and repeat that digit uh, on another arm, you can see it has to go on this one. And that is interesting because it therefore, in the middle box by Sudoku, it's got to be in one of these three squares. But where it can't be is in those two squares. Because obviously, if this is on this one's arrow, mathematically, this would have to be a zero if, this, if these two digits are the same. And that doesn't work. Can't put zero into a puzzle. So that means that that digit... If it repeats on anywhere in the arms, it ends up in the middle square. Now that's interesting because that means that there can only be one repeated digit between all of those arm cells. And that might be interesting because it might push up the value of these circles. Because obviously what we can't do is have that, this sort of situation going on and then say, OK, well, we'll have this one repeating as well. Because if the implication of that is that that is simultaneously yellow and green, 
and that's going to create a Schrodinger cell, a digit that has to exist in one or two digits that have to exist simultaneously in one cell. A concept so ridiculous that constructors insist on using it all the time, um, but not in this puzzle, thank goodness. Thank you, Zendari. Um, so, right, so if we can, well, let's start off by asking the question, can we have no repeated digits? My sense is no. And that, yeah, I can disprove that. If there was, if these eight digits, let's highlight them, if all eight of those digits were all different, what would their value be at a minimum? Well, that would be the triangular number for eight. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight, which I know is 36. Now, 36 is an impossible total because if these green cells do add up to 36, what do those two squares add up to? Well, they add up to 36 divided by 2, because obviously each, each circle is contributing to two arrows worth of digits. So these would have to add up to 18, and they can't do that because we can't double nine them. So the absolute... Right, so there is, there is one repeated digit. We don't know where it is, but there is only one repeated digit. And therefore, the minimum value of the green digits is seven different numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is 28. And then a repeated one, which is 29. Now, those can't add up to 29. Because if they did add up to 29, uh, maths would be broken. Um, but what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine that the, the total for this, this arm here is x. We don't know what it is, but let's say it's x. Well, then we know that that also sums to, to x, if you like. So these, these arrows sum to 2x, and those arrows will sum to 2y. So the total for all of these cells together is 2x plus 2y, which is clearly an even number. It is not an odd number, which it would be implied if we were using 29. So the minimum is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2, which is 30. And that's so underwhelming, I cannot tell you. <laughs> that is so underwhelming, I cannot tell you. That is rotten. Right, so what that's telling us is... The, the, right, the minute so the minimum we could now put into the green cells is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a, a second one to give us a no, sorry, a second two to give us thirty because we need an even number. But that means that the, these cells all together are summing up to a minimum of thirty, but these two obviously are then summing up to half of thirty, which is fifteen, which means we get to, we get to remove the five. This could be a 6-9 pair or a 7-8 pair, but it could have a 6 in it. Ah, that is so... I mean, that's very difficult logic to prove something that normally would be given to us if just one of these arrow cells extended for one more, one more digit. Um, so is it the 7 then? Is there some reason, if, if we make that 7... If that hang on if that can't be seven for some reason is that useful not really yeah this is ah uh, sorry and because because we could have as much as we can probably have more than seven as well on these, can't we? Because I was just looking at the bare minimums. Right, hang on, let me go back to my first thought. Is if that's a seven, this is now not a seven. Seven is in one of these. If seven is there, that would just be eight or nine. And we know that's got to be eight or nine if that's seven, because we know these two together have to add up to at least 15. So I don't, I don't think that's it, is it? This... Oh, 
I want to say that digit's got to be even because it's got to be the repeated digit that we know must exist. But I'm not even sure I trust that. I know that these have to add up all together to an even number. And I know that the digit that repeats within them ends up here. But if it was a repeated, I mean, if, if one was repeated, so one appears on those, but then I, I miss seven out, say, and I put eight in instead, I'm still, I think that's still going to be possible. I'm not certain about that, but that feels right to me. So, So what is it then? That's nine, you've got to put nine there and there. If that, hang on, if that's nine, you've got to put, oh, so if either of those is nine, you know exactly where nines go in boxes two and eight. Ah, God, that's right. Okay, that's it. Oh, that's it. That's going to do everything. That's going to do everything. Right. You can't make those nine. Or you can't make either of these nine. Because if you make either of these a nine, you end up with a nine here by Sudoku because you can't put nine on the, in the green cells, obviously, without making this then a ten. That's not going to work. So if you put nine here, that's nine. And that's nine by Sudoku. If you put nine here, that's nine. And that's nine. But I looked earlier... At, um, I, I think I've deleted it, but look, nine in nine in this box is in in purple, and nine in this box is in purple. So if you do end up with nines in those two cells, you end up with nines in these two cells. And now, what's going on in mi the middle row? Nothing. Well, something actually quite beautiful, but not nothing nothing helpful to solving the puzzle. Because if there is a nine in one of these, you can't put nine in there. You can't put nine on an arrow and you can't put nine in a circle um, because there's nines looking at them in those cells. So there's nowhere for nine in row five. And why do I think that's exciting? Well, fundamentally, it's because if there's no nine in there and yet these have to add up to at least 15, we can now get rid of the six and know that these are a seven, eight pair. So now, and now, these do add up to, um, um, well, these add up to third. These add up to fifteen, which means the arrows add up to thirty, which means we now know their composition. And look, Mark would be delighted with me for this. We know that they must be an absolute minimum. There's no seven up there. Actually, that's going to be interesting. So they've got to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a repeated two. Oh, this is, oh, this is beautiful. Oh my goodness. Right. So I was thinking a moment ago that this seven had done a really pretty job because it had forced the sort of the disposition of the nines that would exist if either of those were nines. But actually, I'm now realizing that seven is not doing that job at all because it wouldn't matter if the nines went there and there. We'd still have reached the same conclusion about row five. But now this seven comes into its own because none of these digits can be a seven. But that means one of those digits is a seven because we know the exact, we know the exact digits that are appearing in green. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and, and another two. So given one of those is a seven, that can't be a seven. So that's got to be an eight. That's got to be a seven. One of these is one seven because that's the only way of making eight. And that and one is therefore used down here. So neither of these has a one in, in them because the one is used on this arrow. And now this can't have six on it up here because if it has six on it, it needs a one to add up. So this is absolutely ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Now there's three, four and five used up here. So we can't use three, four and five down there. So, so now we actually, now we've, Uh, I've got too many twos. No, but I meant to have two. two. Oh, I, oh, I see. One of these will be a two and one of these will be a two. Okay. Seven is not that one. Oh, right. Look, look, look. This can't be one seven. 
So that's 2, 6. This is 1, 7. This, this one is not 2, 5 now because there's a 2 looking at it. So this one has got to be 3, 4 and that one has got to be 2, 5. And somehow or other, 8. <laughs> 8 by Sudoku goes there. This is now unknown. Um, that is absolutely beautiful. That start is beautiful. The green digits here are, well, hang on. That's an 8 as well. Okay, so... Is that helpful? Right, those digits include a 9, and I've not put a 9 in that box, so that digit's got to be a 9. So there's a 9 in one of these three squares by Sudoku. These squares are one, are 1, 6, 9, triple, which we, we know the 2 is the repeated digit, so that's got to go in the middle of the grid. I almost feel like that deserves to be green, actually. Um, in fact, I don't really need the 9 pencil mark, I'm realising. I actually know what these digits are. These are 1, 5 and 9 by Sudoku, and those digits are 3, 4 and 6 by Sudoku. These digits are 3, 4 and 5 by Sudoku. So what does all that mean? Um, well, it's one of the great... It's one of the great opening sequences. You know, if, if, if Sudoku had, I'm trying to think of a film that has a great opening, you know, like at the start of the James Bond films, when they just have absolutely amazing opening sequences. That is what Zendari has done, done here, is a magnificent opening sequence. And all we've got to do now, all we've got to do now is to figure out what the, what the sort of middle part of the film is. <laughs> the worrying thing is I'm not... I'm, I'm totally corpsing here. I can't see anything. Uh, I mean, it's weird. There's just... Nine has got to be there. Is that useful? Uh, nine has to be sorry I can see well nine in this box has to be in one of three positions I want to say is there a reason this can't be a nine for some reason I don't think so wow <laughs> what on earth? How can it? Oh, I see. Oh, good grief. This is... This is really clever. This is just... This is one of those puzzles, a bit like when I do Fistmafel puzzles, where you just suddenly think, okay, okay, this person is really, really clever. Um, eight in this box. Where does it go now? And not only can it not go on its own arrow, it can't go there. Because if it goes on this arrow, it, this is forced to be a nine, which that pencil mark prevents. And that means that eight is, that's an eight, nine pair. Whoops, I want to put those in the middle. That is an eight, nine pair. Um, now... Okay, so 8, right, so where does 8 go in box 6 now? Not there, not there, and not on this arrow, because that's going to make that a, that circle a 9 again. So I think in one of these two cells, but it could go here. If this... Oh no, I see what, I see what this is doing. Ah, no, it's not this, it's, it's this. By Sudoku, one of those is an 8, and that is odd. So here is a knowledge bomb for you. 8 is not an odd number. So 8 goes on there and makes that a 9, and that bounces back over there and stops that being an 8. Sorry, stops that being a 9, 
So now this can't be 8 because that would need to be a 9. And all of a sudden that becomes an 8. So that can't be an 8. Oh, <laughs> look at this one. It's the same thing again. The coordination is absolutely extraordinary. Look, 9 here plonks a 9 in one of those, which doesn't only get rid of the 9 there. It stops this now being a 9. So where are we going to put our 8 in this box? Well, the answer can't go on its own arrow. And in fact, I could have got this sum. I, I, I did it the hard way. I did it by noticing that this circle <laughs> couldn't be uh, a 9. What I could have done is to just gone, well, there's an 8 there. An 8 can't go on its arrow, so 8 goes there. But that would have been far too boring. Um, oh, bobbins. Right, OK, so 8... 8 is in one of those three. Now I bet you, well, it can't go on its own arrow, so it's not there. If it's there, that's a 1-8 pair. Is there a reason that can't be true? That would be an 8. Hmm, I don't know. 9. Where does 9 go in box 3? Well, the answer is not there, because that's on an 8 arrow. So it's in one of these two cells which actually, look, is going to place a 9 in box 6. 9 in in box 5 is placed, which is quite cute. So how many 9s have I got? Some. Uh, one of those three cells has to be a 9. Again, we can't put 9 in the, in the tip of an arrow without making this double digits. Um, So, what do we do now? That's the next conundrum that we have to wrestle with. That's got to be a 1-8 pair, hasn't it? Because it's adding up to 9. Oh, of course. Right. If that's a 1-8 pair, that can't be an 8. So this... Ah, oh, that's so clever. Right. If this was 1, 8, it would break that square. So that's the 8 goes there now, ah, which doesn't resolve this. So that can't be an 8, or that would be a 9. So we've got we've got almost got sort of a mirroring of the 8, 9 pair there in this box. So in fact, yeah, we can do that. Well, we can do something. That cannot be an 8, 9 pair, can it? Because that will break this cell. So this square must be an 8 or a 9 in box 7. Well, and you, you could then use uniqueness, which I won't use, to tell you that it's not possible for this to be an 8 or a 9. Because if this was an 8, 9, and you had a domino here that was an 8, 9, and a domino there that was an 8, 9, the puzzle would have two solutions, because there would be no way of disambiguating. The puzzle's internal logic would not tell us which way round those, the 8s and 9s in these dominoes would, would go or should be presented. So I know in the finished grid we're going to find that this is an 8 or a 9. Um, but I won't use that because I don't like using uniqueness. Um, okay. So this arrow now hasn't got 1 or 2 on it. That's it. Right, there we go. What's what That domino is at least 3, 4 by Sudoku, but that square cannot be higher than uh, 8 or 9. Oh phone's going crazy oh, it's okay it's just it's just a whatsapp sequence that sounds like the phone is ringing so that's got to be three and four adding up to seven which puts seven look in there by sudoku now that oh well is nearly very interesting seven in box one is either on the nine arrow where it will need a two to live with it or it's on the eight arrow where it will need a one to live with it. Now, <laughs> I feel like I should know which of those is correct, but I don't think that I do. Uh, that square is a six by Sudoku because it sees a three, four pair. So in this row, we've not put five in. So five goes here. And again, I'm sort of one, two, and six now into these squares.
which feels like it might matter. Oh, but I can't see how. One, if that's a one, that's a seven. Other, otherwise, it's a two six pair adding up to eight. So this is either a two six pair or it's a one seven pair. Uh, um, okay. Oh dear, <laughs> this is suddenly looking rather daunting again. Ah, what about that arrow then? Because this pencil mark 9 is telling us that this cell is a maximum of 6. So it's a maximum of 6 and a minimum of 3, because if we made this a 1-2 pair, that would potentially add up to 3. Um, I don't know, is there something clever I'm meant to be? If that's a three, we get a three in the corner there, and there would be a song as a reward. The, oh, the seven arrow can't be three, four now because of this three, four. So this is either one, six or two, five. Well, that square is not a 1, because then this square would have to be a 0. Which is potentially interesting, is it? Oh, I see. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Right, OK. That arrow, if this was a 2, 6 arrow, how would we fill this 7 arrow in? We couldn't do it. If that's 2, 6, this can't be 2, 5, and it can't be 1, 6. So that's 1, 7. There we go. 1, 7. Uh, hang on. I'm sure that's going to... I can see that's doing something to this 8 arrow, but this square is now 5. That's a 1. So 5 lives in one of those cells in row, row 6 or box 4. This is now not 1, 6, so this is 2, 5. So what have we not put into this column? 3, 4 and 6. That can't be 6, it would be too big. So that's got, because this has got to be a max out at 6. So right, so where does 6 go in this column? And it's got to go there, good grief, okay. Right, so this domino is 1, 7, because... Um, it just is. In fact, and we know the order. Ha 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 ha, look. That's got to be 1, 7, because it can't be 2, 6, and it can't be 3, 5. But if that cell was a 7, it would be greater than that one, and that would break the world. So we've got to go that way round, which means, I see, so that becomes 7, that becomes 1. So 1, well, 1 and 7 now have to be in this little triple. That's not 7 in the corner because of this. Um, which now means we know what those two squares are. They are three and four. So there's a, right, that's useful because that square's now become a five out of nowhere. And that three, four is joining its friend here to make a three, four pair in this column, knocking three and four out of here. So this is five or six now, going with three or four, and that number. Okay, so three, if this is 3, that has to be a 2, because it couldn't be another 3 to add up to 6. If that's 4, um, this is a 1 or a 2. So this is either 1 or 2. What's that? So if that's 6... don't think it matters does it six would knock would make this a one but I could still do that with four two so this is so it's either one four five oh, I don't know okay I'm not sure I can resolve this there might be a way but I'm not immediately seeing it I've got a three four pair there That's, we know that, well, that's always greater than this now, so that's not helpful. 
Okay, but look, along the bottom row, those digits are 1, 2 and 7 now by Sudoku, and that's not 7, we already know that. So that digit's at least 3. Yeah, okay, let's have a look at this. Oh yes, especially as that can't be a 1. Right, let's have a look at this circle because that circle has a maximum value of six. I'm gonna put all its options in then. So it could be three, four, five, or six, except it can't be. Because to be three, this would have to be a one, two pair, and this would have to be a one or a two, so it's not that. If this is a four, I have to put one in one of these, because one of them needs to be a one, three. It needs to be a one, three pair. So it's not four. Now, if it's five, it can't have one on the arrow, so it's got to be a two, three pair. So that's this is never five anyway, because we can't do five, one. Um, now, if it was two, three, it would have to be two there because of the two down here and three here. Now, why doesn't that work? Five, two, three here would do loads of damage at the bottom. And if this is six, oh, yeah, okay, this is always two. Because if this is six, this has to be a two, four pair because it can't be a one, five pair. So that square is always two and this square is three or four. And then that square sees that square, makes that a six, that a two, which puts one in the corner. So that can't be a three because we know we're adding up to at least five or six. I can't remember why we thought this couldn't be a, oh, this can't be a four because we've got a three, four pair in the column. So that's, so that's four. Therefore that's five. That four means oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Doesn't mean oopsie, 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 but you know what I mean. Ah, now are we getting, no. Oh no, we're not. We're getting a four in the corner. Ah, okay. So those squares are three and six, I want to say, and those squares are two and nine. Um, that square has become a 6 by the power of Sudoku. I can't quite see how this is resolving, but we now know what those digits are. They are 2, 3 and 9, and we know that that's not the 9. 2, 3 and 9. So do we now know what this is? Yes, well, no, <laughs> actually no, but we do know it's not got seven on it because it would need a two on it. So the seven shifts over to the eight arrow and makes this one seven, which is very nice. That gives me an eight here and a one here. That gives me a nine here. And look, I knew it. That square is not an eight or a nine. That one is. So that's got to be an eight. That's got to be an eight. That's got to be a nine. Um... Okay, one seven, looking at that square, so that becomes a two, one, seven combination. Uh, okay, what now? That's six, oh, that six is useful. That's given me a five here, so that's got to be a three. So two and three are now looking at that square, which becomes a naked single nine. And that square now becomes three. Oh, we don't get a we don't get a three in the corner there either. Never mind. What about this nine arrow now? It hasn't got one, two, or three on it, so it's four, five, which doesn't seem to be resolved. But it does mean that square's got to be a six now, and that six is resolved. Six, three, three, four, four, five, five, two, two, nine, nine, one, one, seven, and the top of the grid just fills in like that rather beautifully. We've got four and six to put in this. Uh, so that's four or six, that's four or six. But we know what that digit is, don't we? That, well, that's six. Okay, so six, four, three. That's four, that's six. That's six, that's two, that's two, that's five. So five must go here. I need this to be a four. I was gonna say a three or a four, and it was a four because that was a three. And now that square becomes a three. And that is how to solve one of the most beautiful arrow sudokus you will ever see in your life. Equilibrium by Zendari. That is absolutely beautiful. The, the opening sequence, the James Bond type opening, is it's so clever that you have to consider how many repeated digits there are between these, these things. That is just 
it's really original. I mean, I'm sure I've seen things like it before, which is why, which is why I had the idea. But it's, it's very, very clever that you can, you can increase these by enough that you can then think about how, how this combination can work. But also it's not that easy. I found it harder actually to see, to think about the nines in these circles. I only got that because at the start I thought about nines in the corners. Um, but what I thought was spectacular as well is that once you get rid of nine from here and you put seven and eight, the, the, the magic that that given seven does in terms of because you know the population of the green digits you could we could literally then allocate the digits to the arrows and we knew what the order of this was as well it was that is so stunning it's just such a beautiful idea really really great zendari take a bow loved it let me know in the comments how you got on let me know whether bifurcation was required and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>